Okay, Dr. Trey, we are now live on Facebook. Uh, could you please introduce yourself to the students? Okay, all right. Good morning, all. Um, it's my it's my pleasure to have this meeting. See you all there. My name is Dr. Teresa. Um, I'm one of the in mentor at Med Institute platform. So before I start my presentations, let me introduce who I am. So I have been graduated in 2015. After that, um, I got my MRCBCH part one 2020 then EKB in 2021 and DCH in 2022. Um, the, the reasons why I choose these uh, topics of ABCs of MRCBCH is I understand that, you know, you always can, you know, search in the website of RCBCH and you can read what is this exam, how you could apply for this exam, everything you can know by Googling everything. But I just want to make sure that why you specifically choose for this exam and I just want to also make sure that um, this is really what you're passionate for or do you have any other career paths, you have any confusions with which career path you should choose. Because as a junior doctor in my past year, years, I have ever feel confusions over which careers I should choose, whether I should choose for medicine pathway, pediatrics or GP. And because of that, I have been spending my eight years of you know, postgraduate experience, a varieties of medical specialty, getting to know various tastes of those medical specialties until finally I realized that, okay, MRCBCH is the one I want to do it and because I prefer being with children. So can you all tell me in the chat box that why do you guys, why do you want to choose these MRCPCH exams? At what levels or what steps have you reached to the for the MRCPCH? Can you can you tell me in the chat box so that I can get to know all of you? Why do you want to uh, take the MRCPCH exam? Because, you know, sometimes uh, we, we we have, you know, a lot of the passions. We don't know what we really love for until we know why we do it. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, that's the one thing that might ignite for. And that gives you a lot of, your you know, strengths to go for this exam. Because exam itself has a lot of a lot of strengths you need for these exams until you know that why you take this exam it is difficult to start for this exam so it is better you all know that why I want to take the MRCPCH is this because of the easy career parts in the later life is this because I, I truly love being with children um, so can you tell me can you some, some of the doctor can tell me in the chat box or if you have a strength you can open the cameras and have a chat with me So Dr. Farhana says that it's very interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. So why do you think it's interesting? Can you tell me? What what parts of these exams, uh, what parts of this being a pediatrician is interesting? Doctor, I think uh, the students are quite shy to open their cameras. So it's better if they just write down in the chat box. It's okay. They can write in the chat box. I can read the chat box message. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, right? Pediatrics field is interesting because you can see a wide range of, uh, uh, you know, human beings, very small to up to the adolescents. And it's quite rewarding. You see that patient, patients came to see you with a sick face and then within, within a few days later, they quickly recovers and that's a that's a reward and for me that's a reward of being a pediatrician and I, I'm sure that you know I, everyone came attending these uh, section these le lectures have really a good passion for the pediatrics fields so shall we move to the na next slide Okay, so um, so what is the MRCPCH exam? It is actually a membership exam. Why you want uh, why this degree 
I consider why this degree is good or uh, beneficial to have for those who are willing to have a pediatric careers in the later life. Actually, uh, these exams will equip you with a lot numerous clinical knowledge. They also make you feel like you are ready uh, to take part to deal with the young children from infants to adolescents. You have a good a professionalism and a good manners. This exam will teach you how to deal with the uh, angry patients or how you have a you know how you should compose yourself to the patients with the best manner possible. So um, that's the things of the advantages of taking this exam. Also, this exam is internationally recognizable, acceptable, uh, not just in the UK but in the other Asian countries, Middle East country. You can have um, lots of job opportunity available with that degrees as well. You have uh, career opportunities in pediatric like clinical fields, teaching fields, research or the leadership fields with that exam as well. So that's why I believe that this degree is quite worthwhile to have it if you're really passionate for the pediatric fields. So shall we move to the next slides? Okay, um, so what is the requirements? I want to take the MRCPCH exams. I just passed, uh, I just finished my uh, graduations recently. Can I take this exam? That is most uh, questions I've heard from junior doctors a lot. Do you need the English exam to see this um, this MRCPCH? No, you don't need to take any English exam. You don't need IELTS, OET, anything else. However, these exams, as like many others, Royal College exam is based with the English. Um, um, it's, it's a questions, and that questions you need to read the questions. Uh, that is quite lengthy for you. So until or unless your English is not very good levels, you might not manage with the, you might not have a time, good time management. So reading skills is very important for this exam. So they suggest you that at least you should have IELTS level seven to take this exam. Also for the uh, MRCBCH clinical path, you also need good speaking skills um, just to have a good conversations with the patients and their family members. So that's why they, they suggest that at least English IELTS level seven should have it, but you don't need to show any certificates. You don't need to take the this um, English exam to take the MRCPCH. All you have, all you need to have is, you need to have these uh, primary uh, medical uh, medical certificates. In my in my country, it's called MEBS degree, and that's all you need to take the part one and two of MRCPCH exam. Have you ever opened the RCPCH account? I believe that it is quite easy, and some of you have opened uh already opened the RCPCH account. So you should first, if, if you want to take a RCPCH exam, first go to the RCPCH website, then open the RCPCH account. And after you've opened the RCPCH account, go to the My Account sections, and then there will be a box for book for the exam or register for the exam. And you click it, you just complete all the forms and give the uh, papers like uh, primary medical certificates. After they verify that it is valid, then you can uh, apply for the exams. So it is quite easy. All you have to do is that just go to the RCPCH website, open the RCPCH account, and then you you can you know you can find that how to apply for the exam. They will give you the instructions and follow that instructions. You can probably apply for the exam. Okay. Any questions at this point? So Zaras is asking me that what is the eligible criteria for the MRCPCH exam? So Zaras, um, eligible criteria is you you should finish the uh, MBBS degree. That's all. You don't need anything else anymore. Okay. Um, but for the MRCPCH clinical exam, um, they suggest that at least um, pardon, uh, Ira say that all cleared. Ira, what does that mean? Ira. No, no. Rima, Ira, you don't need OET exam. Okay. Um, for the MRCPCH exam, you don't need any English exam. You don't need to show IELTS or OET. Okay. All you should have is you should finish your primary med medical uh, certificates or degree, like MBBS degree. That's all. Okay. Um. 
So Rima said that I am planning to go for the UK training in pediatric. Is OET mandatory to apply for it? So Rima, um, for the UK training, you should have a GMC registrations. And then for the GMC registrations, you should have this OET exam. So yeah, uh, if you want to apply for the training, then um, you should have GMC registration. For that day, uh, either you should finish a PLEP exam or either you should finish MRCPCH. You should clear all the MRCPCH parts along with the English language test. Okay. Okay, Farana, I, I understand that exam-related stress is true. And yeah, I'm going to tell you how you can handle the exam-related stress. When is when will be your exam, Farana? Have you applied for the exam? Okay, I hope that you have a very you know um, you will pass this exam. In, uh, inshallah, I will pray for you. Um, I will tell you how you can, um, you know, handle the exam related stress. Okay, I tell it later. So exam eligibility criteria, as I've told you, no English language requires, okay? Just only um, you open the account, then give the medical, uh, primary medical certificates. After they just verify that, then on the uh, booking date, you can book for the exam, that's all, okay? However, for the MRCPCH clinical exam, they mentioned that you should have at least two and a half years of postgraduate experience, especially in the pediatric fields. But you don't need to show as an evidence that I have those kind of experience. Um, so it's all right. I think after you pass the theory exam, you can apply for the clinical exam. The problem with clinical exam these days is that the seat is quite difficult to get it. Even after you have finished your EKP exams, maybe three years ago or so two years ago, it is quite difficult to get a seat um, in your specific locations. That's a one problem with clinical exam these days. Okay. So shall we move to the next slide? So what is the requirements uh, for, uh, okay, the, the, it is a continuation, all right? So um, days uh, in the RCPCH website, they mentioned that in each day's uh, um, MRCPCH exam, it, it has a four parts. One is FOP, we call it a foundational practice, TS, and then EKP and the clinical exam. So on each part, you can fail for six time. However, if you fail more than six time, you cannot take the exam anymore. I hope that nobody feel like this, okay? Um, of course, within the seven years periods of your theory exam, you should finish all the parts. If not, you should take AKP exam again to take for the clinical exams, all right? So uh, for, in order to apply for the clinical exam, all the three parts of the theory exam must finish. And they mentioned that at least you should have two and a half years of postgraduate uh, experience in order to take for this uh, clinical exam. Okay, so shall we move to the next slide? Okay. Any questions at this point? So science uh, eligible criteria is you should finish your MBBS degrees. That's all. And how you can apply for um, the registration, I guess, is RCPCH registration, right? Uh, exam registrations. So um, you can just go for the RCPCH website, then open the RCPCH account. Once you, have, once you have opened the account, then you can have your own account. In that account, there will be a box that you can see that apply for the exam or register for the exam or book for the exam. You click it, they will give you the instruction, follow that instructions. They will ask you to upload your primary medical qualifications, just upload it. After they verify that, you can book for the exam, uh, especially during, during the opening date for that exam. Is that clear for you? I hope that is quite clear. Uh, if you're not quite clear, you can also chat. Uh, in the chat box, okay. So, um, MRCPCH exam, um, theory parts. There are three theory parts. We call this the foundation of practice. Another is theory and science. The third is uh, apply knowledge in practice, and then clinical um, examination or OSCE exam. 
foundation of practice is actually it tests the basic child health. So if you have a, it's like more like a knowledge related to the undergraduate degrees, not not specifically that much like postgraduate levels. If you know that, for example, um, the child is having loose motions, having a fever, having tummy pain, the blood there, the, there is a blood in the pool there. Was you're probably diagnosed? What what's what might be the probable diagnosis? Is this a virus cause or bacteria cause? Inflammation cause? So you can probably relate to that based from the, your undergraduate levels. Um, then theory and science is a, most probably related to the basic science like anatomy, physiology, uh, pharmacology, uh, you know, for example, if they give you, ask you that, uh, the child is having SVT, they, they give you the, the uh, we, you give the child adenosines, what is the mechanism of action of adenosines? So uh, these are more related to the TS paper. Of course, T has a statistics. For me personally, uh, when I was preparing for my MRCPCH exam, there are specific parts that I totally hate that are the statistics. And another part is, um, I hate is that, um, uh, what I hate most, and not hate, but I'm really afraid of um, ethics. And of course, um, because this is not quite familiar with me, uh, it back in my countries. So yeah, TS papers, most specifically focus on the T, uh, statistics, ethics, pharmacos, and then anatomy, physiology, okay? The applied knowledge and practice. So applied knowledge and practice is actually more like a special, uh, you know, specialist levels. They will give you a full tools of the child. You have to diagnose the case. They will give you the uh, the chest X-ray. You need to mention what you see in the chest X-ray and diagnosis based on that chest X-ray, EEG finding, ECG finding. So that is more related to the specialist levels. Clinical examiners, you've already know that. It's like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, you talk with the patients, you talk with the parents. Um, those are the, the clinical exams stuff. Okay. Anything else you want to ask this at this point? Let me see. So Zara is asking me that, Mom, can you explain the difference between foundation of practice, theory, and science within the MRCBCH frameworks, how they contribute to overall certifications? So Zara's uh, foundation of practice, actually FOP and TS is a part ones of MRCBCH exams. Um, you can take the exam either separately or you can take both together in the same day. Mostly FOP exams usually held in the morning time of the uh, morning morning and then evening time is a TS exam. I was taking the MRCBCH part one exam uh, together, so like FOP and TS on the same days together. The good point is that when you take the FOP and TS exam together in the same day, the price, the cost of the exam fees is reduced compared with taking the exam separately. The another thing is that you read the you, you read the subjects and then you take the exams. So you don't need to read again and again. For example, if you take FOP and one diet and then TS in the next diet, it's like you have to read again and again and again. So if you read all the parts, the FOP and TS for the one exam, you just finish it. Um, the, but the, the drawbacks of taking the exam, both exam together is that sometime TS is taken after the FOP. So you can be quiet, you know, tiring. I, I, I remember uh, in my exam day, doing while I was taking the TS exam, I was so, I'm having headaches. And I feel very headache. I cannot concentrate anymore. But, you know, um, alhamdulillah, luckily, I just, you know, passed the exam uh, with the very good marks. So that's only drawbacks. But however, if you can handle the very long times of the uh, very long times, like morning or evening, the whole day exam, just go for it. And foundation of practice mainly tests your ability of a basic child's health. Um, just simply like, you know, the child is having, uh, the child is in the schools, she is tearing and does not respond to the teachers, and just uh, does not blink. Uh, what is your diagnosis? Is this a, a generalized tonic uh, epilepsy? Is this a absent seizures? Is this a daydream means? So you can just formulate uh, because this is quite related to the very basis levels. Theory and science is much more related to the basic science stuff, but that is also against, you know, you can carry it over from your undergraduate um, knowledge, but that's, that's not, you know, up to the very specialist level. But AKP definitely 
AKB, there are so many books to read, so many knowledge you should acquire in order to take the AKB exam. Okay. Okay. Um, if you pass that, uh, so if you pass both FOP and TAS, so in the MRCBCH website, if you pass the FOP exam, one of the dash, there is a dash, you know, like uh, FOP, TAS, AKP clinicals. So one of the dash will be uh, greens, like after you've passed the FOP exam. If you pass both FOP and TAS, the two part of the, it is like playing a game. They just take that, okay, you have finished uh, both FOP, TAS, you still left AKP and MRCPCH. So um, that's a part of the certifications. They can give you certificates separately. For the FOP, uh, they will give you the, uh, they don't give you the certificates. They just give you the results and, and they will tell you that how many percentage you get in each chapters. You can you can care, you can look at that which is your, which which subject is your weak points, and you can learn later that for example in my FOP exams, uh, for me uh dermatology might be a little uh, you know I feel a little bit um low marks in dermatology. So for the AKP exams, I I can you know steadily move for the dermatologies. Like I just got a very high marks in the AK, high marks in the AKP exams. But they don't give you certificates. They just give you the passing um, certificates only. If you want to get a certificate, you need to finish all the parts of FOP, AKP, FOBTS, AKP, and MRCBCH clinicals. Then they will give you, RCBCH will give you the certificates, completion certificates, okay? Um, I hope I answer your question, Zara. Parana, you asked me, can you provide examples of common misconceptions or pitfall that students often encounter while studying for the MRCPCH exam? How can I avoid falling into these traps? Common misconceptions and pitfall that students often encounter while studying for the MRCPCH exam. Um, so I think that, you know, uh, the... The misconception and pitfalls, I don't think there are too many mis misconceptions and pitfalls. If you have a good steady partner, you steady with your steady partner, you follow the, uh, you, you have a proper structures for the exam, then I think there shouldn't be too many pitfalls. The only problems is the time management. Uh, because in the diet three, there is a little bit change in terms of the time, providing the time for the candidates. Time management would be the, a little bit problems for the candidates. Another is that uh, some people only choose to read the past test only, and past test is not the only thing that you should focus on because um, the percentage of uh, getting the similar question from the past test is very low. So that can be the that choosing the rounds, uh, um, choosing the rounds, uh, materials or resources that can be the pitfall, and then poor time management, poor reading skills that can be the pitfall. But otherwise, if you have a good steady partner, if you're dedicated enough to steady hard, work hard, if you can avoid yourself with so many distractions these days, you will definitely pass this exam. Don't worry, Farana. Okay. So Rima say that what are the pass rates for the MRCBCH exam? How do they vary between the different parts and sub specialties? Okay. So um, the passing rate is in the RCPCH website. They they just mentioned that it's like an NGOF uh, criteria. So um, for example, if nearly 100 people are taking the exams and if uh, more than 70 people cannot, you know, answer these questions, um, cannot, you know, take the exam properly, the passing rate will be, the, the passing marks will be low than the previous uh, passing marks. Okay. However, if you take the if hundred people take the exams and more than seventy or eighty people can um take the exam very well, so the passing marks will be higher than the passing marks of the previous um exams. So um you can also search that in the RCPCH uh website. They just mention how they you know make that passing rates um uh for the exam. Okay. Can we do MRCP CH and MRCP together? Harsh, I can. Can I ask you? Do you have any confusions or career confusion over whether I should go for the child or whether I should go for the medicines? Because I can completely understand your feeling. That was the feeling I had when I was in my juniors, um, uh, junior levels. Can you tell me why do you ask this question, Harsh?
I'm happy to know why you want to take MRCPCH and MRCP together. Is this because you have a career confusion? Okay. Um, actually, you can take MRCPCH, MRCP together, but I would not suggest you for that. Before you take one exam, just make sure that why you take this exam? Is this the one that I truly love for? Make the research, a lot of research about uh, that, that specialties, whether you can handle the stress, all the you can give almost all the sacrifices in that specialty. If you are, if you 100% sure that you are completely uh, passionate to that field, you can sac sacrifice everything for that specialties, so go for the exam because I would not say that many is the matters, okay? I understand that almost uh, all, every people in these uh, groups are, are rich enough. Uh, however, for me personally, I would not spend on things that I'm not quite sure whether I truly love or not. So better, I would give the many, I would spend my time, energies, and my many and results to the one that I truly love for. Otherwise, it's just a waste of my time, okay? Kiran asked me that, what are the options for retaking the MRCPCH if I do not pass on my first attempt? How should I approach remediations and further preparations in the scenarios? Kiran, I hope that that, that, that that does not happen to you. Uh, if it did happen, don't worry and never give up. If that's, it's, that's what you truly love for, go for it. Simply, you know, in the first attempt, probably because sometimes people have exam now, they have lots of anxiety and when they see the stems, because they is having heartbeats too, too much, they just spend a lot of time on the stems and maybe they have a problem with time management. Sometimes their stress level is too high. They cannot probably think their brain is frogs. So for me personally, Sit in the exam and clear the exam in the first attempts related to how you control your emotion, how you control your nerves. That's the one thing. Apart from the skills and knowledge, how you control your exam nerve is the one thing that just to make sure that you are past the exam, exam in first attempt. What I suggest to you is that if you are about to take the exam later, make sure that what is your weak point based on the reports you have got you got from your previous exam. Look at which part of the, which topics. Is this a CVS section I'm weak at or is this a Tamidu section? So is a statistics test section. Which parts I have, I'm weak at and then work on your weak points. If you're weak at the time management, work on the time management by solving more and more papers, uh, just like an exam setting, doing a mock test by yourself or probably find a mentor who could probably help you um, uh, with your weak points. And of course, do the yoga, calm yourself down because you know, um, this is just a part of an exam. Maybe in later life, you will face with a lot of many other exams that would also trigger your nerves. And it is very important for you to control your emotion and your nerve in order to sit the exam, um, uh, in order to clear your exams. I hope that I, I can, I say what you asked to me, Kiran. All right, um, can we move to the next slide? Um, yeah, uh, so um, in the exams, there are two exam centers. Um, you can take the exam in, in the exam centers or you can take the exam, online exam. So um, for the online exam, these, these are criteria. If you want to take the online exam first, there shouldn't be any test centers in your country of residence. Or if there is a test center in your country, the residence, the place you are living, should be more than 200 miles from the test centers. Okay. Um, but you need to show the evidence during the times of the booking that you are eligible for the online invigilations. All right. Shall we move to the next slides? All right, so I'm focusing more on the diet three. Uh, diet two um, is the same as a diet one, but in the diet three of 2024, there's a little bit changes, um, has changes has been made by the RCPCH in terms of the exam formats and also in terms of um, uh, the, the, the times given for the candidates. In the past, 
we we have got 180 minutes for the FOP, 180 minutes for the TS, but they reduce the time to 120 minutes. In the past, uh, we have um, best of five questions. Also, we also have uh, extended machine questions. However, in the diet three, they mentioned that there will only be 100 best of five uh, questions. And each question will be uh, worth one marks. Um, so the same is true for the TS exam. They will only have 100 best of five uh, questions. And the times given for that exams will be 120 minutes. The applied knowledge exam, there's a part one and part, part two in the applied knowledge exam. The part one, you can take in the morning time and evening time, you can take the part twos. Um, so the paper, one paper have a 60 questions and they give you the nearly um, 150 minutes um, for uh, each of these uh, exams. Okay, any questions at this point? Okay, no questions then. Shall we move to the next slide? Okay, okay. This is, uh, the remaining questions if we if we receive any question in the chat box, so you may answer them at the end of the session. What do you say about it? Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, so uh, this is the examples of best of five uh, questions. I give, uh, can can someone answer this question? So 13 years of why concern that he is not developing any changes of puberty like his friends at school. He attend with his father and on examinations, he noticed the normal prepubertal external genitalia. So the, the question is that, what will be the first signs of puberty? So is this the accelerated linear growth or is this the enlargement of the penis or enlargement of the testes or is this a growth of axillary hair or the pubic hair? Can somebody give me the answer for that question? Rima say B, Sam say C, Zara say D, Kiran say C. Okay. Okay. Aira say B. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Um, so the correct answer is that actually it is a C, enlargement of the testes. So that's the examples of the FOP sample papers, okay? So um, why I was given these questions is that I want to tell you how you can answer the questions. First of all, the thing, the goal thing for answer this question is that you need to know these terms. What will be the first signs of puberty? That is your questions. So that is the pitfall. Sometimes we focus on these stems. The teen years old concern not developing any puberty came to the uh, came to us normal external genital areas. Yes, that is what we should focus on. However, the true part of this exam is these last questions. What will be the first signs of puberty? That is really important. If you miss these questions, then you cannot answer the the answer for that questions. Okay. So uh, that's mean that just a, just a basis knowledge. So you you have to know the basis knowledge of development of the puberty. In the in the in the males, puberty start with enlargement of the testes, followed by the penis, and then appearance of the hair, uh, hair growth. For the girls, puberty start with enlargement of the breast. Those kind of stuff. That is that is what FOP papers look like. Okay. So actually, the correct answer is. Enlargement of the testes. Maybe other people will say that enlargement of the penis or axillary hair. Yeah, that is a sign of the puberty, but that is not the first sign. The first sign is the one that you've noticed as the first sign. Okay, so that's why these are the pits for pit for. If you see that, what will be the signs of puberty? Then all of these are the signs of the puberty. But if you see first signs, then the first signs will be the testes enlargements. All right. So let's move to the next parts. 
So the next part, um, that is the TS one, okay? So a baby boy was clinically normal at the neonatal examinations. At the age of 10 weeks, he is taken to emergency departments because of persistent crying. He is cyanose, screaming as if in pain, which is the most likely diagnosis, okay? So look like this child is having cyanosis at the age of 10 weeks, all right? So is this an anomalous insertion of coronary arteries or hypoplastic left heart or the trilogy of failout or DAPD or DGA? Okay, for Anna say B, perfect. Great, Farana. Yeah, Ira, you are great. Yes. Yeah. Correct. CMCC. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, those who are saying B actually wrong. Um, I I I just you know wrongly see that. The, uh, the stem actually the correct answer is tuf c okay it's not a hypoplastic left heart why why it's not a hypoplastic left heart can somebody give me the answer do you know what is hypoplastic left heart hypoplastic left left heart means the left side of the heart it's you know very 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 it it treats and almost almost never functions at all. So it's like the child cannot live up to the ten weeks without any proper interventions. So this child is can live up to the ten weeks in the neonatal examination. This child is having clinically normal. So total anomalous insertions of the coronary arteries can this cause as a cyanosis? Coronary artery anomalous insertions can present an ECG as a kind of like um, uh, ST elevation, ST depression pictures, but not the cyanotic case, okay? So we can exclude that. Hypoplastic left heart. Because the left heart is almost almost not functioning at all, we need a patent ducted arteriosus or we need palliative surgeries in early stage of life. So the child will never present completely normal in the neonatal examinations for the hypoplastic left heart. That's why B is not correct. Why T total anomalous pulmonary drainage is not correct? Total anomalous pulmonary drainage, why TAPD is not correct? TGA, you might also know that they can present with cyanosis maybe in the first few days of the life. So that's why this child is present with cyanosis in 10 weeks. That's why TGA is out. So the anomalous pulmonary drainage is not correct. Why? I'm sorry, Um, the actual answer is C. So I need to thumbs up for those who answer the C. Okay, welcome, Rima. What is total anomalous pulmonary drainage? Can somebody add it right write down your chat box? What is total anomalous pulmonary drainage? Or you can tell me that what is a what are the what are the cyanotic congenital heart disease? Can you can somebody tell me? Um, at least you know they are four four con cyanotic congenital heart disease condition. Somebody tell me what are the cyanotic congenital heart disease? DGA TOF then. Does anyone know it? Okay, then I give you as a homeworks uh, for today's uh, sections. 
you what you what you all have to do is that first of all make a note of cyanotic congenital heart disease a cyanotic congenital heart disease and so that you are know that uh, why total anomalous pulmonary drainage is not an option for that okay for Anna, you're right you tga and then so have you guys read have you all read the survival Try guide Yes, perfect. Strikeapsid atresia, and then, then, Trunca arteriosis. Trunca arteriosis, perfect. Then, yeah. Tough TGA, Trunca arteriosis, Trichospid atresia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ease. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Okay, you guys already know that how to answer the questions, okay? So these are the TS papers. So it's more like, you know, um, a little bit based in science, like uh, structures. Um, of course, you know, in TS, you can see that uh, what is the mechanism of actions of um, propanolols or morphemes, and you will know that, okay, later. Shall we move to the next slides? Of course. So which book uh, should I read for the FOP? So Farana, you have been preparing for these exams. So are you following those books? Tell me, yes or no. Of course, uh, that's perfect. So the most important uh, book for me is Clinical Cases, FOP, Clinical Cases, TES and AKP. For the DCH exam, Clinical Cases, DCH. These Clinical Cases exam books, it is perfect. Absolutely great for me. Even now and then, when I feel like I don't I don't know about the certain situations, I read that books. It's really good. It has said nearly 50 cases in each book. You get a lot of knowledge from that book. So go for that. It is actually uh, blueprint by the RCPCH website. And you can get a lot of exam materials from that book. That is the first book. For the test books, you can read the illustrated test books, essential revision note, and then guideline books absolutely absolutely perfect and good and these guideline books is not just for the part ones but for the whole part of your pediatric careers journeys um, if you want to came to the uk work um, as a doctor in the uk you know you should also follow that guideline too and and also for the clinical exam these guidelines are exactly what examiners ask you for the ex uh, viewers sections so the guideline books is is you should also have it uh, with you another thing is sample papers Please do not forget, do not, you know, uh, waste your time not doing the sample paper, recall paper. Oh, these are very, very, um, very, very prestigious. And these are very, very important for the exam. These recall papers, sample papers. Never go to the exam without doing those two uh, papers. Past tests, you can do the past tests. Um, that's not an issue. If you have time, do it. But it, it is not that much uh, very important compared with sample papers, recall. All right, that's for the FOP exam. For the TS exam, there is one book called Basic Science Books. I read that book, that is very good. Um, when I was preparing for my MRCPCH exam, because I have these career confusions, like is this the pediatrics, the one I want to do, or is this the medicine I want to do? Before I start my um, the MRCPCH journeys, I just, you know, um, walking towards the medicine field. So in the medicine, there is also the basic science that. So I have read lots of basic science related in medicines uh, subjects. And at the time I've been preparing for the UK, uh, US MLE exams. Um, so I just, I have the, a little bit of knowledge about those basic science. So for me, it is a little bit easy um, uh, for the TS exam, uh, but some people, some of my friends, they find it hard for the TS exam, mainly because of those uh, basic science materials. So I suggest that if you have a problems uh, with the basic science uh, materials, you can also um, read the USMLE uh, if you have time, but I will not suggest for that. Just go for the basic science test books and it is really uh, small and you can get a lot of knowledge uh, from that books. Of course, there is the one book uh, that is very, very important as we call this as the science of practice. Uh, these books, um, I don't have the time for the science of practice to be finished, to finish all those uh, papers. What I normally do is that I just read the box and this box is exactly what in the exams they ask uh, uh, the questions from that box. So that box in the science of practice is very important. 
just highlight it, memorize it. And, and also sometimes you can make a flashcard um, by yourself and you can reread it again, memorize it again, uh, some stuff that it, that can be easy, easier to forget. Of course, sample paper, recall paper is the mess for both exams. Shall we move to the next slide? Uh, Ma'am, uh, yeah. this essential revision note is by Mark BT. Oh no, essential revision notes. Um, you don't have um essential revision note. Let me see it. It might be the Mark BAT one. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a clinical exam one, right? It it should be the theory one. Yeah, can you see that these, um, no, um, so yeah, it's a Mark BAT, uh, essential revision notes for the pediatrics, uh, MRCPCH. Okay, past us. I have to study Mark BT and illustrate textbook both. If you have time, you can study both. That is best for you. Or, <laughs> or if we have to choose only one, then? You can choose, uh, the one that is easier for you or easier to follow. But sometimes, mm -hmm. you know what? Essential revision note, the ethical parts for essential revision notes for me is better than illustrated mm -hmm. test. But for the illustrated test book, some of the chapter like, you know, CVS chapters or GI chapter, these are the good for me, easier mm -hmm. to remember. So I follow that. So you you can choose whichever is easier for you, easier to memorize. Mm -hmm. Essential revision note, is, they just write so many lengthy. And it yeah. is difficult. Yeah. It's like yeah. a Ratta book. That's right. That's right. So if you don't like lengthy ones, you can choose that illustrated test books. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Shall we move to the next slides? Hello. Yeah, ma'am. You can move to the next. Okay. All right. So AKP exam is a part two. I'm sure that inshallah you all were entering to the AKP exam one day. So I'm just giving you the brief reviews of this AKP book. AKP, as I have mentioned, it's more like a specialist knowledge. So it's in, involve a lot of photos, uh, radio, EEG, those kind of stuff. So, so many books for the AKP. Do not worry that these books are also because of so many photos there. You don't need to read a lot of lengthy words. So it's quite fun to study for the AKP, even though the book seems to be too much to read. Okay, You can read the survival guide. I personally suggest you guys suggest you all to read survival guide in the part one of MRCPCH exam because it is really good uh, for the later part of your MRCPCH journey, even though sometimes some people use only in the AKP part. But survival guide is really good and whoever have a time, just read early, early in, in your journey. Of course, the clinical cases of FOP and AKP, again for the AKP. You can read the guideline books. There is also another book on new formats, 250 questions, to what MRCBCH, radiology book, get through, past us, sample paper recalls. These are for the AKP exam. Along with those, uh, you can have to Google lots and lots of the photos of um, the pictures of the child, um, you know, just to make sure that you can have a spot diagnosis if they ask you the questions. Okay. So let's move to the next slides. All right, so uh, this is the one. Uh, so Farana asked me that, how can I handle the exam stress? That is a very, very good question. Sometimes exam stress is real and many people fail the exam, not because of lacks of knowledge or skills, but because they cannot control their anxiety toward the exam. First of all, I want to ask you, we are afraid of something. We get anxiety, we get anxious or nervous because we are afraid of something. And why do we are afraid, especially during the exams? We are afraid of failing the exams, right? So we have been blueprint in our mind since our childhood that failure is not a good thing. It is a shameful thing. It's like a rejection. 
However, if you just change your mindset, mindset of seeing the failure not as a shameful thing, not as a losing things or something, but as a way, an opportunity to learn something, you will feel the pleasures. You will have a pleasure to go for the exam. Just feel these exams as a kind of journey, not as a, a destinations. Okay, it's like a pleasurable things for you. Take it, go for the. Uh, I remember when I was taking this MRCP Part One exam. I just I, I just go for the exam because I just I, I in my mind I just make myself saying that okay I'm going to gain some knowledge from that exam first of all I will accustom I, I, I will first handle my anxiety and I will make sure that how it is look like the exam hall stay you know uh, stay uh, taking the exam the computer with other people how I can manage my time um those kind of things. but I understand that given the many spending lots of time just to pass this exam, you will have at least exam stress or not. But however, if you keep saying that I should pass this exam, I should not fail this exam, you are triggering your anxiety. So do not, so you need to change your mindset of taking these exams as an opportunity to learn something, as an opportunity, even if you pass this exam, you upgrade your level. If you don't pass this exam, that's not an issue. I have got experience. I learned to I, I have learned that what is my weak point and how I can handle this in my future's life. Not just for the retaking the exam, but but for many other things in my life. Because we will see lots and lots of rejections, setbacks, failures. Even after, you know what, I have passed the MRCPCH, DCH, I have got my GMC registrations. I'm applying for the job in the UK. I have got lots and lots of rejections. Um, so as an Asian uh, background, rejection is like something like, you know, uh, totally afraid. I don't, I cannot accept the rejections. It's painful. It's like, you know, ah, uh, I don't have a value. I feel like this. But over time, I feel like this, okay, they reject me. Why do they reject me? What can I do to improve myself further so that I can bring myself a very best version to other people? So these are the stuff, okay? So do not do not keep your mindset that this exam is my life. If I don't pass this exam, I will be finished. No, it's not like this. This exam is just a part of your life. It's not totally your life. There are so many things ahead you have to face. There are so many difficulties ahead after this exam. So just take it simple, take it easy. Of course, uh, you need to control your emotions. So I suggest you that having a good breathing techniques. Okay, so before you go for the exam, first of all, uh, wake up early, do the some yoga flow, have a good breathing techniques. What, before you go for the exam, have a good breathing practice. Then take a good uh, prayer from your parents or from your family members who love you. Their prayers are also with, with you doing that throughout the exam. And I'm sure that it will probably bring significant advantage uh, for your exam success as well. And also give uh, some charity to the people. Makes, you know, I wish that I want to pass this exam um, with this charity, with this good deed. Make this exam pass me. Of course, you should have a good intentions of why I take this exam. Is this because I just want to show off the world that, see, I deserve that I have this degree. I'm one level ahead of you. Is this because is, is, I take the exam? Is this because of being an arrogant person? It's not like this, okay? We take the exam because we want to help other people. We take the exam because we want to make sure that we have a good knowledge, skills, and competence so that we can help other people in times of their needs. That's our missions. If your missions and your visions align with your values, the way you study, the way you give your time, the way you go for the exam it will be very, very easy and you will love it. The journey will be totally, totally the one that you feel pleasures and love in. Okay, so that's why I suggest you that before you do anything in your life, for, let it be not just the MRCPCH exam, okay, even taking finding a partner, life partners, just make sure that is this something I really, really love or is this something I do it because I'm in hangers of something, okay? So, for example, some people, they just uh, they just want to get a job quickly and they realize that only MRCPCH pathway can, can get them getting a job easily and they took the exam. 
but they don't have a pleasure. They don't feel happy at all. And they later end up with feeling depressed and sad. And they just feel like, oh, I did it wrong. So, but it's okay. You go ahead. You realize that this is not something. You can have a U10 and come back. But that just wastes off your time. So in order not to waste your time, just make sure that this is what I really want or not. Why I choose the exam. You should also make a note that what is my short-term destination? My short-term destination is passing this exam. Long-term destination is with this exam, I'm going to bring the value to the wall. I'm going to bring something to the walls. That might be my long-term destinations. Of course, visualization is very important. Okay, sometimes we are afraid of failing the exam because we have been visualized ourselves as a failure. For example, Verona said me, how can I control my nerve? You can control your nerve simply by visualize every day as if you pass this amorcipitation first attempt with a good marks and your family celebrate you with a good sweet dessert. Just visualize it. You feel happy and then you feel pleasure while you go for the study or while you go for the exam. Once you have visualized yourself as something you want, you will achieve it definitely. Of course, routines is very important. In these distractions, for even I find it really difficult to study my clinical exams because when I when I surf the internet, everything has been really entertaining for me. I spent lots and lots of my time watching the YouTube staff, and I just finished after I finished you know entertaining myself. I realized that I don't have time for today. I have been procrastinating for my clinical exam, and I don't want anyone of us have these problems. So we need to make a routine. So we need to be consistent. First of all, you need to make the timetable. You should have a deadline at which time. Shall I take the exam in diet two or diet three? Make a timetable. Set your time aside for your study only. Keep all the distractions away from you. No phone, no notifications. Just all those things go away with you. Just have a study and you and your study partner. That's all. Okay, of course, having a good study partners is really rewarding. I understand that during my AKP preparations, I wouldn't pass this exam if I don't, I didn't have my study partner, my study partner and me study and she teach, she taught me the thing that I did not know. And I taught, I taught her the thing that she did not know. And with the discussions time, we are having a fan. We're not, we're not bored at all. We can stay nearly six hours a day. And having a steady partner is really good and you should find your steady partner and the steady partner should be the one who is consistent with your time, to, with your steady time, not like the one who steady one day and not steady other day that should not be like this. Okay, of course, be don't forget to have a fun. Don't forget to have a self care. Don't forget to give your time to the peoples you love. I remember I have spent a lot of my time studying, 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 forgetting, forgetting to give my time to the people I love most. I regret it later. Uh, what you know, I I wish that I did. I didn't do that that much of this, focusing only on study, forgetting about my hobbies, my he everything else. So don't do like this. Okay, you should have a balanced life. You should have work. You should also have a spend steady time and you should also have your time for your hobbies, cooking, whether it be cooking, exercise, swimming, yoga, those are very good for you. Never, never, ever pass a day without doing exercise, yoga, have a good nutrition or good sleep. These are the very important factors to control your emotion and your nerve. And I'm sure that once you control your emotion and your nerve, along with your good knowledge and your skills, you will pass this exam definitely. Um, thank you so much. Um, I think I have finished uh, my presentations. Um, so Farana say that how do I stay updated with the latest research? So Farana, all you can do is that just read the guidelines. If you want to stay updated with the latest research developments, uh, first of all, um, you just take the MRCBCH first. And then you can also go to the library, you read the latest research paper, or you can also have, you know, listen to the podcast. Um, this podcast, they will give you the new updated ideas. 
So for us, for the clinical MRCPCH, I will inshallah uh, probably tell you, but right now I'm also in my journey toward the clinical MRCPCH. So um, I think I might not be in the best best position to explain to you about clinical MRCPCH. Once I pass the MRCPCH clinical, definitely inshallah, I will bring the, this kind of um, uh, talk to you about how to prepare for MRCPCH clinical. At the same time, if you are interested to get, to take the DCH exam, I'm happy to give my experience regarding the DCH exam, okay? Okay, I think that we have finished. Um, so uh, have, I have a friend to end, and I hope that you all will pass the MRCPCH exams. Any questions? So far, of course. Okay, I love having a steady partners, and I'm willing to. I willing to you all have a have a have in my group of my clinical MRCPCH preparations. I've been making a group uh, to study clinical MRCPCH, but first you all need to pass the MRCPCH part ones, and I hope that you all will pass them. And let's see to or let's see you all together. Okay. I'm really thank you all and it's really fun for me and I'm it's my pleasure that I can bring some things uh, to junior doctors who are aspiring to aspiring to be a good pediatrician as I've already mentioned to you be a pediatrician not for the many but for the someone who can bring some things to the people in need of your help okay so I think that uh, we can end the conversations uh, we can end our sections um, okay, if you don't have any more questions, shall we end? If you have any questions, please do let us in the chat box. And if not, then we should just cut it off. So I think we don't have any questions. And uh, I just want to appreciate you, Dr. Trey. It was, just, it was a wonderful session, quite uh, engaging and interactive. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Or and Farana, don't be stressed. You are pass, inshallah. All right. So thank you so much. And I'll leave the noun. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.